Hello and good morning from Flowmotion. So, honestly, I just woke up and the world wasn't the same because the new version of After Effects just came out. Hey, and maybe you are wondering now whether or not you should update or not. Well, here's some spoiler. Yes, you should. But let's start from the beginning. So here are the main four, maybe five reasons why you should update. And the first one is a game changer. Multi-frame rendering. Uh, okay, so what does that mean? So, well, it actually means exactly that. After Effects is now able to render multiple frames at once. Hey, and there's also a new render queue design. So let's have a quick look at this. Or even better, let's make a quick comparison. So here I'm rendering a pretty heavy composition in the old version of After Effects. And over here you see that it took 9 minutes and 20 seconds. Well, okay. So now let's have a look at the new version and you can also have a look at the new design. The green stripe represents the frames that are rendering at the same time. And at the moment you see the blue of course shows finished frames. And when you click on info you can see in detail how many frames you are rendering at once as well as the average frame render time. Hey, and all of this is set to default when you launch it, so you really don't have to do anything. So you see that this is a really huge improvement and that alone should be reason enough to update right away. And just think about that it also works for previews. Hey, and the next features are as good as multi-frame rendering. So the next is speculative rendering, so what's that? Well, let's just quickly render our comp once again. Hey, wait. What has happened? Why is it even faster? Well, this is because if you are not working in After Effects, but you are having it open, it will start caching frames. So once you come from a coffee break or a phone call with your client... Hmm. So, well, back at your computer you have your preview ready to watch. And also ready to render, because those frames do not have to be calculated again. And by default, this happens after 8 seconds, but you can change that in your preferences under Previews. And that is so cool! And if you have not updated yet, you will definitely do now, right? But wait, wait, there is more. If you have a long render going on, you can simply turn on notifications over here and you will get a message in your Creative Cloud app once your render has finished. Well, I leave that option open for you to activate or deactivate. And by default it's not activated, but you can also activate it directly over here in the render queue. The next one is also pretty cool and super helpful. It's the so-called composition profiler. We all know that situation when your comp is super slow and you cannot find the issue. Well, now you can. And you can actually do way more with that. So just go over here to your timeline and add the new extra column called render time and you see per layer and frame how long it will render and you can work on issues now or indeed find issues in first place. Okay, now after all this performance improvements I want to also show you one really cool new feature that is now also available in the new version of After Effects and this is within the Mocha tracking software. So just for all of you who lived on the moon for the last 10 years, Mocha is a tracking software that ships along with After Effects. Just search for Mocha and drag it onto the footage you want to track and launch it by clicking on the Mocha icon. Well, so far so good. And most of you knew this already. But starting today, you also get the new and improved Adjust Tracking module that until now only Mocha Pro users could benefit from. So here's a quick overview how it works and when you actually need it. So let's say you have tracked your shot and everything works fine. Hey, but when you take a closer look with the blue rectangle, the tracked surface, it seems to drift over time. Hey, and this could happen because of motion blur or if the object moves in and out of frame. So retracking could be an option, but hey, I'm actually pretty happy with the track. Hmm. So let's adjust it. And in the same way as the track, I want to adjust translation, scale, rotation, shear and perspective and hit on set points. And now it creates points for me in the corner of my tracked surface and I can align them and see a zoomed preview. Perfect. 
So when I scrub through this now, I see the first frame that I had aligned as well as the current frame so I can find issues in a super easy way. Hey, and when I spot some drifting, I simply, well, adjust it. And while doing so, I have fine controls, which makes this process even simpler. So once I'm done, let's overlay the surface again. And we have a super perfect track. Hey, and if you ask yourself now, why haven't you placed tracking markers? Well, because I've done that a few hundred times in my professional work, and then I found that the reflections in the screen really don't help. And if you want to keep the reflections, the markers are a big problem. But you need the reflections for the realism. Hmm. So Mocha tracks the phone as good as the markers anyway. And sad but true story, on many, many shows I've worked more on retouching tracking markers than I actually worked on the tracking. Hmm. And I'm not saying you don't have to use tracking markers, but use them in a smart way. So, hey, and that's it. Those are the main new features in After Effects. So will you switch? Let me know in the comments. And now I wish you a lot of fun in After Effects 2022. <sighs>